I guess I, I wanted to ask about AJ, and we asked about this in the spring in different yeah. ways, but I know he was a guy who made some plays for you last year. I know he's a guy you've had kind of high expectations for for a yeah. while, but what's different for him when it's not Matt or Peyton, maybe at the top of the the food chain in that room, he's the guy that you're, you're turning to to be more vocal, to sort of yeah. set a tone. What's different for him this year as opposed to a year ago? Um, you know, I think that, when we when we first met in January and we had both both freshmen were early enrollees. So my whole group's been together and I said, okay, look around your room, look around the room, what's different? You know, well, Pat and you know, our, uh, Matt and uh, Peyton weren't there. So you know, I think um, in regards to AJ, it was just a natural assimilation to the top that, hey, I got to step up and lead, you know, and that's, uh, you know, we always talk about the, 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 the standards of the position, the expectations of the room. And I think that Peyton and Matt set such high expectations the last couple of years. It was easy for AJ, who had been like the third wheel in a lot of ways, just go ahead and, and to step up. And that's what his expectation was, you know. And, you know, the the, the thing that AJ is kind of hidden is, you know, he's been a star on special teams for two years. I mean, he's a guy who walked on campus as a true freshman and was running down on kickoff team and was forcing double teams on kickoff team just because of his physicality and, you know, and his ability to make plays. So, you know, he hasn't maybe shown it as much at the tight end position, but uh, he's had op opportunities to get in games uh, at different times. I know he was in the, the, the Michigan game two years ago at home when we won. He was in a key time at tight end. So, you know, I think he's, you know, he's waited his time and, uh, you know, he's excited, he's ready. And, uh, you know, he's also ready to lead, not just the room, but, but the offense, you know, and I think he got that from Peyton. He got that from Matt. You know, I don't, you got a guy who's, you know, Peyton was the most productive tight end in the Big Ten the last three years. And Matt Bjornson started every game and for four years, or played in every game for four years uh, when he walked on campus. So two really great uh, leaders and, and two guys I think he's really absorbed a lot of those leadership qualities from. Uh, Kevin, we've heard a lot from uh, between Coach Allen and Coach Bell about uh, about James Bomba and Aaron Steinfeld and what they've done uh, so far in this camp, basically. Which, what's impressed you about those two guys, and, and how do you see them uh, fitting in, basically? Yeah. What do you see their roles being? Yeah, you know, it's uh, it, it's great to have two local guys. You know, we got the Bloomington South, Bloomington North connection right there, so we have a lot of fun with that in general. But uh, those two guys, um, you know, I, I think with James – you know, James is a big guy. I mean, uh, and, and he's a very, he, he's learned to be a very physical guy. Um, you know, he, he has soft hands. Um, you know, and I think that he's shown that, you know, right now he can go in and especially when we're in 12 personnel, he can go in and him and AJ are, you know, those are two big bodies that are both athletic and physical, can catch the ball. So he's a really good compliment. I think, especially when we're in 12 packages and we want, you know, short yardage situations. Um, but but I think he can also play in the open field, you know. And he's had you know he's had a lot of opportunities in camp. Uh, Aaron may have the best ball skills in the room. I mean, he naturally has really good ball skills, you know. So I, I think with him, it's just been a, a just a, a, a time where he's had to learn to stick his nose in there and and be physical and and, and be a, an inline blocker and and do some things. So they both bring a little bit different, um, you know, a little bit different qualities to the room. But, uh, you know, we always talk about building the room, and that's kind of what I've tried to do. It's such a young room. I mean, other than AJ, nobody's really played in a college football game. So it's such a young room that they all bring something. And I think that, you know, our goal is, is to get better each week uh, of the season, and they will because they have, none of them played a, a, a ton, um, but they complement each other very well. So, Just one follow-up on AJ, I know you would have had kind of an idea when you're recruiting him of what you think he could be, how you think he could develop. But yeah. coaches talk a lot about being impressed by guys who embrace special teams early. Yes. I guess what what did that tell you about him in terms of maybe both what he was physically capable of on the field and, and also just what you kind of had in terms of his football mentality? Yeah. Um, you know, one, he was a tough kid. You know, I mean, there's – you know, there's nothing tougher than running down the field on kickoff team and having to, you know, have a 40 yard head start and, and somebody's trying to take your head off and and uh, running through blocks. And like I said, just from the from the get go, I mean, he was forcing double teams, which, you know, um, for, for the return team. So you knew you had a tough guy. Um, you know, he was growing into his body. You know, he, I mean, he's he's a legit six, six. Uh, I think he was around 235, 240 when he first got here. He's 250 and and, and uh, 
his body fat percentage is down. So he's really developed his body physically. Um, but I think in those early years, you knew you had a really good player that was just going to take a little bit of time. I mean, you know, uh, just to develop himself physically and then the, the details, you know, the details and techniques of route running, of blocking, the schemes, understanding football. You know, those are all things that, you know, are really hard when you're a high school kid that's played middle linebacker, which is what he did. He, he was the defensive player of the year uh, in his uh, conference, and he played a little tight end. So, you know, you knew that he brought those qualities, uh, the, the toughness, the physicality, all those things. But you also knew that there was going to be a process there where, like all the guys, he had to learn details. And I think that what he's learned um, in the last couple of years, playing behind Peyton, playing behind Matt, is details matter. You know, and, and Peyton really learned that in you know, the last couple of years as he really tried to progress himself in a position where he could play at the next level, how important those things were. And so A.J. was able to, obser uh, to uh, observe that. And then with Matt, you know, Matt played because Matt was a, a, a big time effort guy, you know, not overly talented physically, but just a big time effort guy. So if you're A.J., you're watching those two guys in front of you and you're taking those qualities you know, from both guys and you're applying it to your game. And, and not just AJ. I mean, James was in the room, Aaron was in the room, you know, those other guys are all in the room. That's how they think the game should be played. You know, and if that's the, the, that, the, you know, what you can set, the expectation you can set for your room, then that helps going forward. Because now the young guys come in, young guys are all young guys, but the, the, the freshmen come in and they don't know any different, you know, whereas that may not be the case with every, every position room where you have had that type of leadership. So, you know, I feel blessed in that way. And, you know, this is a really, to me, it's a really exciting group of young tight ends I'm going to have for a while. So, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a process and you need to get to game one because obviously everything changes when you get to a, a real game environment. Coach, you mentioned A.J. being someone ready to lead the offense. I, I guess maybe more from an intangible perspective, how have you seen him evolve since he got on campus? Is that, you know, something vocally you've seen him make big strides? I guess how have you just kind of seen him develop in that area? Yeah, I don't think I, he ever really had to vocally develop. He's always been kind of a vocal guy. Like I said, he came in uh, with a defensive mentality, a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. So he wasn't backing down early on. Now, Early on, maybe he couldn't back it up, you know, but he wasn't backing down. So I think that what you've seen with him is just the confidence that he's been able to build in, in knowing techniques and understanding routes and understanding coverages, you know, and, and schematically. So I think that that in itself now that and guys, you know, guys see it in practice every day. You know, you may not see it if you're just watching games because the last couple of years he hadn't played a ton. But the guys that have seen it in practice, the guys that are in my room, they know what he's capable of. And so, you know, you have to, you know, for your for your uh, for your words to mean anything, you really have to be able to show that you can be productive, you know. And and even though at tight end he's played limited, he's showed that he's been productive on game days, you know, in special teams and those types of things. And and and, and normally that's what happens at the next level too. I mean, you start out being productive at special teams, and then you work your way into, you know, into into playing, uh, you know, on offense or defense. So, but um, yeah, you know, I think the overall confidence level that he's gotten just because he's had, you know, those reps and uh, in practice and. And uh, every time, you know, Matt or Peyton was was uh, you know, a little banged up, he got those opportunities, you know. So, you know, he's had, he's got a lot of banked reps. They're just they're just practice reps right now. Um, what have you seen from Brody Foley so far in fall camp? I know he's a guy that had a pretty impressive high school career. And yeah. where, where do you see him uh, fitting in in this room? Yeah, I mean, uh, Brody is very similar to AJ, you know, very similar to AJ. Um, he is, uh, he played offense and defense, you know, so, um, you know, he's used to mixing it up. He's, he's a very physical kid with ball skills, you know, and, um, you know, I think that uh, he has the potential to contribute right away, you know, and, and, and you know, we mentioned James, we mentioned Aaron, you know, um, AJ, but I think Brody, you know, Brody's big thing is now I have to learn the details. I have to be a great technician. You know, I can't overwhelm people with my size and strength, which is what he's, he's tried to do a little bit. And uh, but you see him almost on a daily basis getting better, getting better, getting better, because, again, he's watching the guys that have been here. He's watching AJ. He's watching, you know, James and Aaron and those guys. And even even like uh, Trey Walker, who's who is uh, uh, been in the program for four years, Ryan Barnes, young, you know, the, the older guys that are going to contribute on special teams. He's watched all those guys. 
And, um, you know, now he's just got to be a, a great technician. But a lot of similarities to where A.J. was at, um, you know, when he was a freshman. Um, so, again, it's an exciting room uh, to have uh, going forward because I just think they're, they're going to keep getting better. Exactly to leapfrog off of that. You mentioned you have a younger room, you have a younger group to develop over the next few years. How have the older members of the room helped them come along? Because I know A.J. Barner is a name that's come up as a mentor time yeah. and again. Yeah, I mean, A.J. is, you know, he, he's, he's, he's been here on campus two years. He's a true junior. Um, but I, I think not just A.J., but I mentioned Trey Walker, um, who's a walk-on player who's been in the program. Um, Ryan Barnes, kid from Noblesville, who's been in the program. All those guys are, are so unselfish that, you know, they're, they're willing to spend time, you know, with the younger guys and make sure that the room is as good as it can be. And that's what we talk about, develop the room. Because at the end of the day, you know, we'll have five or six tight ends that will travel. And to get on the bus, you got to contribute. So those guys are going to have to contribute on special teams. And that's the big thing that doesn't get talked about, you know, with the tight end room. You know, we're going to play four or five guys on, on game day. So, and, you know, the, the philosophy we have is that when you go into a game, you play like a starter. You know, so I think that that's all impacted, you know, the, the younger guys. But the reality is when you take your older guys who maybe aren't getting a, a lot of exposure or a lot of playing time and they're willing to invest in the younger guys, that's special. You know, that, that's special. And um, I think that's what we've been able to grow the last few years in, in, in the tight end room.